Hello, everybody. Welcome to another session of TNT. Today is Monday, May 25th. It is Memorial Day in our country, so uh, we remember such in our prayer. Those who have uh, given their lives for us, uh, died for us, uh, for our freedom and for the freedom and protection of others. So, uh, anyways, with, because it's Memorial Day, I thought I'd just touch on uh, the aspect of those who serve, in particular those who lay down their lives for others, and then also even tying in uh, some of the, in the history of the church, in the United States that is, uh, some of the military chaplains, uh, some of the priests who have served in different ways. Uh, I wish I had uh, more prepared earlier. I have a bunch of different stories, but unfortunately I didn't have to get through all the ones I want to get through. But anyway, uh, to just start, you know, as we think with this Memorial Day, in regards with those who uh, serve, and in particular Memorial Day is remembering in particular those who have uh, died for us uh, in the midst of battle for our protection, that one, I just thinking about in the gospel, there's that one scene when people coming out to John the Baptist and asking him what they must do. And in particular, John the Baptist, it says how some soldiers approach John the Baptist. And just to read what that uh, John the Baptist says to them, uh, that says, Soldiers also asked him, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, rob no one by violence or by false accusation and be content with your wages. That he's pointing out to them, he doesn't say, you know, you, you, you can't serve, you know, uh, but he just tells them, call them to act rightly, act justly, uh, not only in regards with their wages, but also, you know, not to rob anyone by violence, even though they have uh, a certain power, physical power as a soldier, they recognize that responsibility they have to, to act rightly, to act morally. And then notice in the Gospels, uh, in particular the centurion, our Lord is moved by the centurion, moved by his faith. When the centurion sends some of his uh, servants to to ask Jesus to first come to the home and then then telling him, well, only say the word, my servant shall be healed. And the Lord is so moved by his faith, saying that in all of Israel have I not found such faith. And then we see how the soldier, the soldier throughout history has a great responsibility, a responsibility, a great duty to protect a great duty and willingness to help bring order. As, because it's in order in society that when things are in order, that then we can grow as a, in virtue. It's when there's chaos, it's much more difficult. Can we not grow in virtue when there's chaos? Oh, we can. Obviously, the Lord will always offer the graces we need. But it's so much, in a way, easier for people as a whole when there is order. And those who serve, those serve in the military, but also those who serve, uh, for example, as police. They help bring order to our uh, society. And so when we think about with the soldier, what they take on, what they're willing to sacrifice for, that, that willing to give their life for the common good. And that's why you can think of those words of our Lord, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And we think about it as Memorial Day, those who have laid down their lives for us, uh, those who have died for us, uh, so many countless numbers of those who have died that, that you and I have never even heard of. We've heard them in terms of a number uh, that we hear about so many died in this battle or so many died in this war that... Uh, as we hear it, we are reminded uh, that that there are people involved. Sorry, I just have to unplug my phone here so it doesn't keep coming off while we're doing this. Uh, that there are people involved with uh, in the midst of battles. So it's, we're not talking just numbers. We're talking about people. And with each person, they have loved ones. They have families. And I think about in our parish here, uh, a young man who died... Uh, named uh, Eric Valdepenas, uh, his father's funeral I did uh, just last year. Uh, but Eric died in 2009, 
uh, serving over in the Middle East and how he died due to, uh, if I recall correctly, I could have it wrong, uh, but to a, a bomb, a, a attack on his unit in a car he was in. Uh, but a very striking story was years before I ever knew about Eric was I was on a retreat. And I on the retreat, the priest uh, told us this story about how a group of soldiers uh, went on these secret missions to help save this little girl that was born in Iraq with all sorts of uh, birth defect. And that it was the, ch the medic that they were with that when they were actually uh, trying to chase down some insurgents, this woman called out for them in, in very broken English of asking for help. And the medic and some of these soldiers stopped and they went to this home. And there they found this little girl, this little baby that, uh, with, that had all sorts of physical malformities and was not going to live. And the, the medic and some of the soldiers, and Eric being one of them, then when they were finished with their rounds, secretly kept going back at night to this particular home to care for this baby. Eventually, they were able to, through incredible work and through God's grace, an extraordinary story of the intercession of Our Lady, that this little girl was able to be brought to a hospital in Boston where she could undergo a surgery to correct uh, the malformity that she had that would, she would just not be able to get uh, over in Iraq. And, and the intercession of Our Lady was that with this particular unit, uh, after the attack that occurred, where Eric Valdepinas had died and a few others had died, that the, the others who were doing this secret mission to care for this child, they were greatly discouraged. And greatly discouraged, not only uh, wondering how are they going to, is it, like, could they still help this little baby, but also all the uh, red tape they had to go through to try to get this baby out of Iraq to the United States for this surgery. And it was their chaplain that he asked them and said, well, have you, you know, why don't you pray the, uh, the memorari, memorari, which is a prayer to Our Lady. And when they prayed it, they said then that instantly, all this red tape that they knew they had this long time to wait, everything all of a sudden suddenly cleared. And they immediately get able to get that baby out of there. Uh, and then she was uh, sent to Boston, one of the hospitals in Boston where she had this successful surgery and she was cured. And, her name is actually Miriam, which is a form of Mary, uh, very interesting enough. But it was the soldiers, the soldiers that were seeking to stop insurgents, where at the same time they were made known about this little baby. And it wasn't their responsibility. It was not part of what has been entrusted to them. But then making that sacrifice on their own, kept going back to this one town that was very dangerous to keep caring for this child. And so when we think about soldiers, those who lay down their lives, it's, it's that willingness. They know they're going into danger. They know that there's a real chance they might die. And yet they're willing to do it. And that's why we can never take for granted. That's why this day, Memorial Day, is such an important day for us. It's, and I think a lot of people today, we try to people remember their loved ones who have died. But that really isn't the purpose of Memorial Day. That's the purpose of All Souls Day that the church celebrates. They remember all those who have died, our loved ones. Memorial Day is in particular to remember the sacrifice of those who laid down their life for us. But I think about also when we talk about the soldiers and those willing to lay down their life, there's also, as a priest, I also think about priest chaplains, that willingness that they have to go with the soldiers. Uh, one a friend of mine, a priest, uh, who has a, been in the military chaplaincy for many, many years, uh, he's telling us stories about how in Iraq that the chaplain, for many of the soldiers, the chaplain is so important for them. And he said how humbled he is that when he's going from one place to another and he's traveling with the soldiers, they're very attentive to him to make sure he's safe so that they can receive the Lord, that they can be protected uh, by God and strengthened by God's grace in the midst of the horror of warfare. Uh, but I think of some who have died uh, in New Bedford. Uh, I was trying to remember, and I, I'm drawing a blank, I think it's Duval School, but, is it, and, but I could have it wrong. It's the name of the school directly across 
from the rectory of Our Lady Mount Carmel Church in New Bedford. That school is named after the first priest who was killed in World War I uh, for the, uh, with the United States uh, chaplaincy, uh, that he laid down his life. Uh, or how the U.S. military really started to discover that time at World War I is when they discovered how important chaplains were. And they realized, especially among the Catholic soldiers, how when they knew they had a priest with them, that they had a lot less fear going into battle. And so even though it, for the military as a whole, it wasn't maybe as much of that spiritual awareness, but they could even see how the soldiers were strengthened, the Catholic soldiers were not afraid to go into a battle uh, because they knew they had the priest with them, because they knew then they had the Lord with them in a very unique way. Uh, in Vietnam, uh, Father Frank Capadano, who was a priest, he's from New York originally, uh, how he uh, would go out with the soldiers as they're battling, and he would anoint uh, men or hear the confessions uh, as for some of them as they were dying. And he eventually was killed. Uh, he was hit, if I recall correctly, hit, he was hit by a grenade, as he was anointing a man, and there's a famous kind of painting of that, of Father Capadon leaning over a man as he's anointing him, and it's just before he himself would be killed. But the, that there are priests who are willing to go out uh, into, into battle, even though they themselves do not fight, they're fighting the spiritual battle to, to help the soldiers. And it's not only helping those that they serve, there's also stories of how cha priest chaplains in World War II, World War I, that if they went out into the battle and they came across those of the, the considered the enemy, the priests would, would also give them, the, those that could receive the sacraments, give them the sacraments as well because they knew more than it's just this other country, they knew this is also another brother in Christ who needs the Lord. Uh, and so the, the priest chaplains also have played a really crucial role in the faith of so many uh, willing to go out there with them. Uh, and it's a striking scene. I know it's just a movie, but those who have ever seen, for example, Saving Private Ryan, there's that battle when they, on D-Day when they go attack the beach. There's the, the priest chaplain who's crawling and going in between different soldiers who have been shot to, and you hear him leading them in an act of contrition as he gives them absolution. Uh, but anyway, so it's a day we remember. Remember sacrifice. And we never should ever take that for granted. And we pray for our soldiers, obviously those who are living, we pray for them and their protection. Uh, we pray as we, as a church, which we're always praying for vocations, we pray that they will also have for the military, the priest chaplains they need. Uh, pray for Deacon Steve Booth, who is serving, He'll once he's ordained a priest, he'll be obviously a priest of our diocese, but also he's co-sponsored by the archdiocese of the military. Uh, so he'll be serving abroad in a few years uh, with soldiers. And every year, uh, being involved with vocation work myself, we always uh, have those who come out to implore for us uh, to go to our bishops as vocation directors about having seminaries also serve eventually as priests for the military because there's such, so many tens of thousands of soldiers who don't have access to the sacraments, who don't have uh, any priests with them. And so we also pray for those vocations uh, so that those serving, giving their lives for us, can have access to the sacraments as well. So anyway, that's some of the basic things I want to touch on today with Memorial Day. I uh, hope all of you have a, a great day today uh, and you're able to spend some time with family. Uh, everyone be safe. Many thanks again to all of you who have joined me today. Uh, I see uh, Chandel is recommending Fulton Sheen's Wartime Prayer Book. Uh, it is a great little book, small little book, great book for people to use for prayer, the sense of spiritual warfare, but also he, writ, he wrote it for soldiers um, to help them in the, uh, as they're serving abroad. Uh, but many thanks to the parish, the great people here at LA Mount Carmel. Uh, many thanks to uh, my parents, as always. Uh, many thanks to my siblings. And yeah, just keep on smiling, everyone, and continue persevering. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.